Proverbs chapter 23, verse 19. He is now my son, we're back to my son. Solomon writing to his children, what if God was writing to us? Be wise. I mean, who would want their child to be a fool? Not after what we've been reading about fools in the Bible. And guide thy heart in understanding. I'm trying to find my note here. It's look to self control. You're the one that guides your heart, whether you want to do right or you want to do wrong. And the Bible speaks about the heart, thinking out of the heart, imaginations of the heart, believing with the heart. And you can be wise through your heart in the way. Where you guide your heart is the guidance of the way you're going to go. Be not among wine bibblers who lack self-control, among riotous eaters of the flesh, just devourers, gluttons, partiers. And it's okay to have a little wine. Now listen, if you live in Europe and there is no good water besides bottled water now, which now that doesn't give you an excuse, but in times past, when there was no bottled water and wine was a staple drink, I mean, you didn't drink it to, to get drunk. You drank it because that was your only source of, of intake for water. But there are people who drinking so they can drink alcohol. And there are people who just eat, just to excessively eat and devour. And for the drunkard, and the glutton, that's back to verse 20. And like I said, in Europe, there are nations, there are people who drink wine, grape juice, unfermented, because that is their staple. And there are nations like Germany where, you know, they all drink beer. That's, that's not proper. And become a drunkard and a glutton is just, you just eat and drink to the excess with no self-control shall come to poverty, you're gonna spend all your money. And the more alcohol you drink, the more alcohol you buy, the more alcohol you're gonna drink, the more alcohol you're gonna to need to buy, and you're just taking the money off your plate and off your family's plate. And drowsiness, Eating too much. I mean, after Thanksgiving meal, the one thing you want to do is you want to go lay down and take a nap. After you consume so much alcohol, you want to sleep. Shall clothe a man with rags. You know what my jury, the people who are homeless on side of the road begging for money, my jury, not all. I didn't say all. My jury is an alcohol-related issue. Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she's old. Listen to your parents and take care of your mother. There's the assumption of the Bible that the father is going to die first, the children will be survived, and the mother will be a widow and needs to be taken care of. And there are exceptions. It's the children that's supposed to take care of the, of, the, of the old parents. And even Paul said, listen, there are qualifications for the widow. She has to be a certain age, but one of the first qualifications, if she's got family, let the family take care of her first before the church. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. What is that truth? You buy? What if you buy yourself a King James Bible? And you get yourself a King James Bible, don't sell it. And out of the King James Bible, you get wisdom, you get instruction, and you get understanding. 
That's what you get from the Bible. God says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Approved unto Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be changed, rightly defining the word of truth. Chapter 23, verse 23, would be a great verse for your Bible. The father of the righteous, going back to the father, shall greatly rejoice. He that begetteth a wise child shall have joy within. No father, or should no father, be happy with a child that's a fool, a scorner, or simple. Again, what if that, that father of the righteous, what if that's God the father, and how he looks at us, at his children, and we, we become wise through the truth, through the wisdom and understanding, and the instruction of the Bible, and we do study to show thy suit proved unto God, then God is greatly pleased in joy. And that there's no pleasure in a Christian that don't read his Bible, don't study his Bible. And it's not why. The father and thy mother shall be glad and see that, and she that bear thee shall rejoice when you got a righteous child that's doing right in wisdom. And the assumption would be too that the father and mother are wise and have been instructed of God. And then when we all get to glory one day, we'll be all together as a family unit. And there's no joy of a father to be worrying about when I get to glory and when my children get to glory are they not going to be there in glory? My son, there's that my son again. Give me thy heart. Now, that would be perfect for God to speak. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Let thy eyes observe my ways, not the devil's way, not the worldly way. So we're stepping away from Solomon writing to his son that failed. And we're looking to God. If we give God our heart, our all. Listen, the heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. Out of the heart comes adultery, murder. When we give God the control of our heart and our sin, that pleases God. <coughs> For a whore, God, plain speaking, is a deep ditch. And there's no other way out of that ditch unless somebody helps you. You're not going to get out of that ditch yourself. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. Again, for a lone individual, there is no help. And you get somebody who's unrighteous and wicked himself, you're only going to pull him deeper in that pit. She, the ditch or the woman, also lies in wait as for prey. And we've read that earlier. She's, she's at her corner. She's outside her house. She calls the men that come. She's there for the purpose of destroying you. And increases the transgression among men. This is Solomon's sin right here. Women. And the first thing he does, he makes a remedy with the, with the Egyptian pharaoh's daughter when the Bible says, no, don't go back to Egypt. Never mind the horses and the multiplication of gold and silver, which you've been warned. Who has woe? There are three woes in the book of Revelation. I think they're in between the seals, I think. Troubles, problems, pain, suffering. Who has sorrow? Sorrow came as a result of the curse. If there's one thing that God said to Adam and Eve, 
both of them, is you'll have sorrow. So here's something we're going to look at, verses 29 to 35, that brings more woe and brings more sorrow. Who has contentions? Who has arguments and fights? Anybody who's been involved in alcohol and anybody who's been in the barroom scene as I have been or been amongst people who've been drinking, you know sooner or later there's going to be a fight, contention. Who has babbling? That's the first time that word shows up. And if you've heard any drug, they babble. Babbling is for, for young kids who can't speak. Who has wounds without cause? They wake up in the morning, they get bruised, and they don't even know where they got them from. They wake up in the hospital from a car accident they got involved in, and they don't know how they got the wounds. They don't remember. Who has redness of eyes? That's one of the signs of an intoxicated fellow. His eyes are always red. That's six questions. Six is the number of man. So what's the answer to all six questions? They that tarry long at wine. Not just teetotaling. They sit and drink and nurse. Nurse the bottle, nurse the glass. They that go, go. The Bible tells the Christian to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Here's one that goes to seek mixed wine. There's your mixed drink. I'll have, you know, uh, on the rock, I'll have a scotch and a water. Take those two things and put them together. I'll have my Bloody Mary mix. There it is in the Bible. Mixed wine. And the wine here is not grape juice. Wine is it's been fermented. It's alcohol. And there are people here taking the wine that's been fermented, intoxicatability, and they're mixing it with other things. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, red wine. They say red and white wine go something good with something good. It don't go good with anything. When it giveth his color in the cup. Look at that. Alcohol is called his. Not a her. His. It's of the devil. When it moveth itself upright. So... Alcohol moves. It's got a spirit. And when I grew up as a child, it used to be called the spirit shop. At the last, it biteth like a serpent. Well, well, who is that serpent? Genesis 3, Revelation 12. It's the devil. And stingeth like an adder. One of the things they used to call alcohol was snake juice. The bite of a rattlesnake. And they're quoting from a Bible. I'm sure maybe modern Bibles that I don't even look at that dress this up to make it look good. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. So where do you see at bars at? You see ladies night. And you get some men that get so intoxicated, they wake up in the morning with a woman, they don't even know who she is. They've given their phone number and information to women they never even knew. One of the minor prophets says, you, you give them alcohol so you can see their nakedness. And thy heart, which you're supposed to give to the Lord, shall utter perverse things out of your heart comes not, not not just your mouth and your lips not not your head out of your heart for jesus said out of the heart is adulteries murders lies cussing your heart 
When you go to the doctor for your brains, you're going to the wrong doctor. When you go to the cardiologist for heart, that's the wrong doctor. You got to go to Dr. Jesus. You got to bring your heart to Jesus and repent of your sin and believe with thy heart. And let me tell you still, I, I've been in the prison ministry many years and I have met dedicated men. They are saved. They love the Lord. They do, they do want to do right. And they have bawled and cried that they have ruined their lives. They have ruined their families. They are in jail. They want to quit that alcohol, but they can't. And when you get the DTs and all that, you start seeing snakes and things crawling around. And they describe alcohol as a boa constrictor. It just wraps around yourself. And when you take a breath in, it wraps itself. And every time you take a breath in, it just wraps. It's slowly killing you. And I've known saved, dedicated men that love the Lord. They have been involved in liquor. I don't know what it is, but I, I don't want to limit God. But they themselves have not gotten the power over the alcohol. I thank God one day after I, long after I was saved and I was married, and I just said, you know what? I just told my wife, I said, my wife didn't drink. She was a teetotaler, tea thank God. I just said, you know what? I'm done. Take that crap that's in the refrigerator and just dump it down the, the, the drain. And she listened to me, thank God. And that was it. And I thank God that when I smell beer, I'm going to use a Bible word. You may not like it. When I smell beer, I smell piss. That's in the Bible. Look it up. So when I smell that beer, I, like, I don't have the taste for it. Thank God I got that. The eyes shall behold strange women, the heart shall other perverse things. Look at verse 34 and 35. Anybody who's been drunkard knows what this verse is. This is this is getting sick. Yay. Oh, that's what the devil said. Yay, has God said? Alcohol is in a heart. It's not a sickness. It's a sin of a heart. When you call alcoholism a sickness, you're not calling what it is, and you're not going to deal with it as it is. Now, AA, alcohol knowledge, had Christian roots. Good, strong, biblical Christian roots that had, of all things, gone apostate. At one time trying to think the Salvation Army was good and they've gone apostate at one time the Baptist Church was good they've gone apostate Tri uh, triple A that's, that's the car deal AA was a good biblical sound organization that they're not sound on listen you can have AA anywhere and if they quote a Bible verse it's going to be some general they ain't going to get attached to the Bible verse. They're not going to say, it's a sin. I've even heard people in there, oh, it's a sickness. I've got a sickness. Huh? you got the wrong S. you got to call it what it is, sin. Thou shalt be as it lieth down on the midst of the sea. Sea sin. <laughs> You're going to puke. Or as one, or as he that lies on top of a mask of a ship. Rocking, rolling. Oh, oh, I can only keep it in. Oh, don't let me be sick. I've had those times. Next best thing to drinking is you got your head against that cold toilet seat and you're just vomiting it all out. Yeah, that's a good time. They have stricken me. Oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel well. Shout thou say, I was not sick. I don't get a hangover. I don't get sick. Then what's that, what's that puke you're sitting in? 
They have beaten me. Uh, uh, that's the wound. And I felt it not. True. You know, there have been DUI accidents. And I used to be a tow truck driver many years. And I pull, I get a call saying, you know, accident. I pull up to the scene. Here's this mangled wreck. And I go talk to the police officer. You know, you get a lot. DUI. And God's like, yeah. And you look at that wreck. I, I bet you that guy's hurt. Oh, no, he don't feel nothing. I mean, he'll feel it in the morning. But, but man, when, when we took him, he didn't feel Alcohol re relieves the pain. That's why they drink it. But when that alcohol comes off and gets over through with your body, then you're in trouble. When shall I awake? I will seek it again and not seek God. Oh, I'm just so sick. Oh, the hangover. Oh, I'll never do it again. Lord, get me out. I'll never do it again. And then once you get sober up, Friday comes along, you got money, you're right back doing it all over. He never learned your life. That's a fool. That's a fool. 